Ms. Bevington held the position of WAC president since January of 2022. She is also an executive in residence at Georgia State University, Robinson College of Business. Ms. Bevington is an Emmy Award winning journalist. Georgia, Georgia Trends named her among its Georgia 500, the most influential leaders of 2023. Prior to joining the council, Ms. Bevington spent two decades as an award-winning television and radio broadcaster with Georgia Public Broadcasting, PBS NewsHour, National Public Radio, Marketplace, Connecticut Public Radio, UF, WFSB TV3, Sundance Channel, and Showtime Network. Her TED Talk, The Future of News Media is in Our Hands, empowers media consumers to counteract misinformation and infotainment. Ms. Bevington is a life member of the Council on Foreign Relations. She serves on the Board of Visitors of Agnes Scott College and Atlanta Mayor Andre Dickens' Women of Atlanta Adversary Committee. She graduated magna cum laude from Bernard College of Columbia University. Please give a warm welcome to our main speaker, Ms. Ricky Bevington. How's everybody doing this morning? Great. Anyone out getting coffee? Just make your way in. It's always a little awkward when someone reads your full bio. Does anybody have that feeling? <laughs> it is my absolute pleasure to host this morning's opening session of the Republic of Korea Southeast United States Economic Partnership Conference 2024. Give yourselves a round of applause for being here this morning. Ambassador Su and the Korean business community are dear friends of the World Affairs Council of Atlanta. If you're not familiar with what we do, we are a nonpartisan, nonprofit membership organization. We were founded in 2010 by the Atlanta business community to support the city's transformation into an international economic hub. And it's thanks to business partners and civic and government partners in this room that we're able to do that and support Atlanta's increasing drive toward economic influence, locally and internationally. We're going to begin this morning's session with a Korean drum called a daebuk. It's right here. It is tradition to start an official ceremony with this drum. And Ms. Han Suk Young, president of the Atlanta Korean Culture Center, will perform the daebuk.
for uh, opening this session with a beautiful and inspiring performance. We're going to now invite all of you, our audience, to take a look at the screens up here. Um, we're introducing a new website. This is the website, the Republic of Korea and Southeast U.S. Economic Partnership. It will be a main platform for the economic partnership between the Republic of Korea and the Southeast U.S. It's specific, especially for Korean and American businesses that are currently doing or plan to do business uh, in Korea and in the Southeast. And there is a Contact Us page. Any inquiries or even suggestions that arrive through this website, this email address will get answers quickly. The Korean Consulate and the Korea Trade Investment Promotion Agency, in cooperation with the Southeast States governments and the Korean International Trade Association, will do their best to serve those companies. So you can maybe take your phones out and screenshot it uh, or make that available to you uh, throughout the day. So the theme of this conference is Republic of Korea Southeast U.S. Economic Partnership 2.0. Why 2.0? Since the end of the Korean War in 1953 until the early 2000s, the U.S. had the biggest and most important economic partnership with Korea. Thanks to the excellent economic partnership that was the first phase of the economic partnership, what we call Republic of Korea Southeast U.S. Economic Partnership 1.0, Korea achieved an unbelievable economic success and transformed itself, as we all know, from an aid recipient country to a donor country. And then Korea started to diversify, as countries are wont to do, its economic partnerships to Europe and China, and that trend lasted for a couple of decades. And then the recent COVID-19 pandemic renewed the Korea-U.S. economic partnership. Both countries are now working together to rebuild the global supply chains that have been disrupted by the pandemic. I imagine many of your businesses have been navigating that over the last four or five years. Over the last three years, Korean companies invested around $100 billion into the U.S. economy. A considerable amount of those investments have come to the Southeast United States. This strengthened partnership has accelerated a huge movement, and we're part of it here today, of Korean and American business people traveling through Atlanta's Hartsfield-Jackson International Airport. And now between Seoul and Atlanta, three direct flights operate every day. So what we're seeing is the economic partnership 2.0 taking place in this region. And that is today's conference serving as a platform to promote this partnership. The most important figures to lead the economic partnership are all present here today, here in the front at the reserve tables. I'm going to introduce a few of them. From Southeast state governments, we have Ellen McNair, Secretary of Commerce of Alabama, Stuart McWhorter, Commissioner of Economic and Community Development in Tennessee, Harry Lightsey III, Secretary of Commerce of South Carolina, and Christy Brigman, Deputy Commissioner of Global Commerce for the state of Georgia. From the Korean government, we have Ambassador Sanko Yusso, as Consul General in Atlanta, and Sun Yoon Kim, Deputy Director General of Bilateral Economic Affairs from the Ministry of Foreign Affairs. From the core organizer of this conference, the Korean International Trade Association, Mr. In Ho Lee, Executive Vice Chairman. Where's Mr. Lee? There he is. Executive Vice Chairman Lee and Deputy Director General Kim flew a very long way from Seoul to Atlanta. Thank you so much for being here. Session one will be moderated by Jay Kim, president of the Southeast U.S. Korean Chamber of Commerce, and session two will be moderated by Mark Pearson, director of diplomatic outreach and strategic development for the Atlanta Council on International Relations, which is another civic nonprofit organization uh, doing very important work here in Atlanta to connect the Atlanta and international business communities. And finally, we have many important people here who have made today's conference successful. The Korea Trade Investment Promotion Agency and Korean and U.S. business leaders, including the Korean Corporation Alliance of the Southeast. Ambassador Sam Kyo Su will deliver his opening remarks. Ambassador Su assumed the position of the Consul General in July 2023. Prior to the current position, he served as Korean Ambassador to the Islamic Republic of Pakistan from December 2020 to July 2023. He also worked on two multilateral overseas missions, 
the Korean Permanent Mission to the United Nations in New York, and the Korean Permanent Delegation to the OECD in Paris. At the Ministry of Foreign Affairs in Seoul, Ambassador Se took various positions, Dean of Education and Training of the Korean National Diplomatic Academy, Deputy Director General for International Economic Affairs, and Deputy Director General for Energy, Climate Change, and Environment. Mr. Su joined the Ministry of Foreign Affairs in 1993 and has spent most of his career in the area of economic and multilateral cooperation, such as the UN, G20, OECD, and APEC. Welcome to the stage, Ambassador. I'm very honored to host today's Academy 2024 Republic of Korea and South East U.S. Economic Partnership Conference. It's high time that we, industrial and business leaders, government officials, and economic experts get together to find ways to promote and facilitate the continuously growing economic partnership between the Republic of Korea and the Southeast U.S. Yes. As the, uh, our host has already told us that over the last three years, Korean companies have invested uh, approximately 100 billion U.S. dollars in the United States. And out of the uh, investment, huge amount came to this region. Now, uh, around uh, 300 Korean companies are doing business in this uh, Southeast United States, creating countless uh, jobs in local communities. Trade volume itself between uh, Korea and Southeast United States in 2022, recorded uh, 30 billion US dollars, which accounted for 16% of the total trade of the those countries. I have to uh, say many thanks to uh, Mr. Ino Ri, Executive Vice Chairman of the Korea International Trade Association, KITA, without his support and commitment, today's uh, successful organization of this conference would not be possible. I also sincerely thank all the six state governments that my consulate covers in the Southeast United States, in particular, again, Secretary Alan McNair, Commissioner Stuart McArthur, and Secretary Harry Lassie, and Deputy <coughs> Commissioner Christy Brickman. Thanks for attending this conference. I'm grateful to all the organizers and partners of the, con the conference, the Korean Foreign Ministry, Kochra, Korea Corporation Alliance of the Southeast U.S., we call it AUKUS, Southeast U.S. Korean Chamber of Commerce, Asia, WAC of Atlanta, Metro Atlanta Chamber, Gannett Chamber. Surely we thank all the Georgian political leaders. I see that the man lives there, his uh, state uh, representative. They are always a big supporter for the Korea and U.S. equity partnership. Most of all, today's heroes we know are all the business people from Korea and American companies. Thank you for attending. You are actually leading our economic partnership. Distinguished guests, I would like to mention just watching today, this economic partnership conference would not end uh, in just one time Tokyo. This partnership conference will be watched at the launching of the website. Through this website, we'll continue to serve as an audio platform to connect all the stakeholders and actors of partnership. They are coming companies, central and local government, business association, and local communities. To conclude, Korea and U.S. alliance started uh, as a military and security alliance in 1950s, now has expanded into economic, cultural, science, and high-tech domains. The alliance once 
on Eng in Angola of the Korean economic success is uh, evolving into a major contributor to the prosperity of the global economy by the rebuilding stable and resilient global supply chains. The current economic partnership 2.0, I'm sure, will bring more prosperity to Korea and South East United States. And I hope this conference will serve that purpose. Thank you. Thank you for your opening remarks, Ambassador So. <coughs> Executive Vice Chairman Inho Lee will now deliver his opening remarks. Mr. Inho Lee took office as the Executive Vice Chairman of the Korea International Trade Association in February 2024. Prior to his appointment to KITA, he served as the President and Chairman of the Korea Trade Insurance Corporation, Korea's official export credit agency. Vice Chairman Lee worked for more than 30 years in the Korean government with a main focus on energy and trade. His last position at the government was the Vice Minister of Trade, Industry, and Energy of Korea. And he also worked at the Korean Overseas Missions, the permanent delegation of the Republic of Korea to the OECD in Paris and the Korean Embassy in Washington. Welcome to the stage. Good morning, uh, distinguished, uh, the, all the distinguished participants and guests. Uh, it is my honor and privilege to welcome you to the Korean Southeast United States Economic Partnership Conference. Uh, my name is Inul Lee, uh, the Executive Vice Chairman of Korea International Trade Association. Uh, first and foremost, the, let me express my sincere gratitude to uh, Sosan Pyo, the Consul General of the Republic of Korea in Atlanta, uh, and Alan Bangle, uh, Secretary of Commerce, Alabama, uh, Henry Dynasty. The, third, the Secretary of Commerce of South Carolina, uh, Stuart uh, McHoot, uh, Commissioner of Economic and Community Development, the Tennessee, uh, and Madison Lawson, the Senior Manager of Select Florida, uh, and Corey Howard, the Director of Economic Development Partnership of North Carolina, and Jung Soo Shin, uh, Director General, the Contra Atlanta. Uh, thank you again uh, for the organizing this esteemed event and honoring us with their presence. I'd also like to extend my heartfelt gratitude to all participants from six southeastern states and South Korea uh, for joining us today. Uh, your presence underscores our shared commitment uh, to fostering stronger economic ties between between our regions. Uh, as many of you may know, uh, this conference builds on a rich legacy of cooperation between Korea and Southeastern United States. Uh, this partnership has been a cornerstone of our economic dialogue since the 1980s. Uh, from 1986 until 2008, uh, this platform facilitates numerous trade and investment opportunities uh, and exchange delegations uh, laying a foundation for our current partnership. Uh, with growing influx of Korean companies doing business in the southeastern states, uh, I believe there is no better time than now uh, to reconvene and resume uh, the Korea Southeast United States Economic Partnership Conference in order to revamp our strong bonds. Uh, today, uh, the Southeastern states are home to over 290 Korean companies, uh, bringing with them the innovation, investment, and the spirit of cooperation to this dynamic region. Uh, last year, the Korean foreign direct investment in the southeastern states uh, reached the, its peak at over 3 billion US dollars. Uh, this figure 
represents more than just the amount of investment. Uh, it signifies uh, Korea's sincere commitment and endeavor uh, to building long-term relationships with the southeastern states. Uh, this investment partnership has not only created opportunities for Korean businesses, but, but has also enriched the local economies, economies uh, creating jobs and fostering growth in states like Georgia, Alabama, Tennessee, uh, North Carolina, South Carolina, and Florida. Uh, the historical and economic significance of these states cannot be overstated. Their commitment to industry, education, and technological advancement uh, makes them ideal partners for Korean enterprises looking to expand their global footprint. Uh, recognizing their importance, the KITA headquarter and its U.S. overseas branches uh, have been focusing on expanding activities related to the region. Uh, KITA uh, has organized seminars to guide Korean companies on investing in these states, uh, held meetings with their representatives, and arranged networking luncheons with congressional staff members uh, from those districts uh, to strengthen uh, ties with southeastern state, states. In this regard, today's conference is not just about business. It is about building bridges of friendship and understanding each other so as to assist each other towards mutual prosperity. As we embark on this, this journey together, I encourage all participants both from the United States and Korea uh, to engage actively, share your insights, and forge new connections. Uh, let us harness the collect collective the wisdom today to create a roadmap for more prosperous future uh, for both regions. Uh, in conclusion, I'd like to thank each and every one of you uh, for being here today. Your presence is a testament to the enduring spirit of collaboration and partnership that we cherish. I'm confident that this conference will lead to fruitful discussions, innovative ideas, and strengthened economic ties. Thank you. Thank you. Very much. Thank you very much, Executive Vice Chairman Lee. And now we are going to hear from our state government representatives. Secretary Ellen McNair, welcome to the stage to deliver your congratulatory remarks.
and attracting over 90 suppliers through the Alabama and Georgia corridor. Through um, those many years, over 20 years now, in traveling to Korea, it, almost every single year during that time with our uh, Asian uh, Director of Asian Strategy, Holly Pegg, we've made so many trips that I have really lost count. We have really seen the incredible forces for good that these Korean companies bring to these communities. Hyundai and the supplier network that has followed has been extremely active in community efforts, expanding workforce development opportunities, school robotics teams, STEAM programs. These are precisely the types of civic partnerships that every town and community dream of having. We're committed to building on our existing relationship with the over 110 companies that are in Alabama while finding ways to explore new avenues of innovation. As you can see, I'm very optimistic about the future of the relationship with Korea. Over the years, I have developed a deep admiration for the Korean business culture, which prizes teamwork, uncompromising quality, and innovation. I see these same qualities reflected in the people of Alabama. So I close now um, that we um, are so grateful for our 110 manufacturing companies that are in towns like Montgomery, Auburn, Greenville, Lenox, Huntsville, and so many more. This is played out through so many of your own communities throughout the Southeast. We look forward to this partnership continuing and to flourish well into the future. So obviously we know about the University of Georgia, University of Alabama rivalry. Do we now have a Kia Hyundai? Well, let's see what Tennessee has to say. Has to say, Mr. Stuart McWhorter, welcome to the stage. Good morning. Uh, it is a pleasure to be here. Uh, I'm actually from Atlanta, so it's a little bit of a homecoming for me. Uh, I'm Stuart McWhorter. Pleasure to serve as the Commissioner of Economic Development for the great state of Tennessee. Uh, Consul General Sun, and a distinguished guest, thank you for having uh, me and my team here uh, in, in, uh, in Gwinnett County. Uh, thank you for the invitation. It's not every day that I'm able to join my counterparts uh, and to share in the successes of, of the Southeast part of the United States. There's a lot to celebrate, not only in Tennessee, but I think we'll all agree to celebrate in, in the Southeast. Um, and it's, it's just a pleasure to be, uh, an honor to be here and really speaking to uh, what has really become an emerging federal, uh, excuse me, foreign direct investment partner with Tennessee, which is uh, South Korea. Our state's longstanding international success dates back decades, uh, and the partnerships we formed are a testament to our profound leadership the state has seen. We have a team of five business development representatives based in countries across Europe and Asia. And these team members are really the secret weapon of our international recruiting efforts because they provide a sense of trust and understanding that can only be formed by deep relationships. In addition, the international brands that already call Tennessee home are some of our biggest assets, recruiting additional companies to our state. Today, there are close to 1,005, excuse me, 1,100 foreign-owned establishments in Tennessee, and these companies employ nearly 165,000 Tennesseans in 77 of our 95 counties across our state. We understand that these companies could locate anywhere around the globe, but they choose Tennessee. Our 
central location, our pro-business climate, skilled workforce are just a few of our key advantages as well as our exceptional quality of life. Tennessee is one of the lowest debt, lowest tax states in the country. In addition, Tennessee is a right to work state with no personal income tax and a long history of fiscal responsibility. And to top it all off, our state is led by someone who knows what it's like to run a business. Governor Bill Lee, who is in his second term, ran a family business before becoming our governor. And under his leadership as governor, we are thinking long term. 15, 20, 30 years into the future, and making strategic and historic investments in Tennessee's infrastructure so that we are ready and able to support the continued record growth Tennessee is facing, everything from broadband, transportation, higher education, and mobility. South Korea has emerged as one of Tennessee's top foreign direct investment partners. We have over 30 companies and joint ventures in Tennessee and have invested over $12 billion of CapEx in our state. And since Governor Lee has been in office since 2019, we've landed 16 projects by Korean-based companies, creating just over 5,000 net new jobs and more than $7.1 billion of capital investment. Nearly half of the $7.1 billion investment that I just referenced includes LG Chem's historic $3.2 billion investment in Clarksville, Tennessee, to build a U.S.-based cathode manufacturing facility. 850-job project uh, of LG Chem was also the single largest announced foreign direct investment in Tennessee's history. In last year's, we planned major expansions from Korean-based companies in each of Tennessee's grand divisions, companies like Hanku, Unitech North America, Hannon Systems, Income. Dongma Electrolyte. I recently visited another one, Dukesan Electra Electrolyte Manufacturing Facility in Shelbyville, just an hour away from Nashville. This project was announced in late 2022. To see the company's plan, I went over and visited to just see it in action. It was almost complete and learned that it is currently the largest electrolyte manufacturing facility in the U.S., which solidified the work by our department and partners in our local government. When we are recruiting companies to the state, we want to make sure that they're not just the right fit for Tennessee, but we want them to be the right fit for our communities. It's clear from what we saw on that tour at Tucson, we'll be a value partner and employer in, Shelby, in the Shelbyville community. I can share more numbers to show that Tennessee and Korea have a strong partnership, which is destined to grow with the great Korean companies we have doing business in our state. Thank you for the opportunity to join you today. We look forward to working together in the future. I'm confident we will do more. We're going to be back in Seoul in October. I'm excited about that. We've got Ejong on our team. She's a rock star. And it is a pleasure to be with all of you this morning. Thank you. Thank you very much, Commissioner Corner. Welcome back to Atlanta. Thank you. <laughs> And now we'll hear from South Carolina, Secretary Harry Lightsey. Welcome to the stage. Well, good morning as well. Uh, on behalf of the state of South Carolina, I want to thank our friends from the Korean Trade Investment Promotion Agency, the Korean International Trade Association, and to Consul Jim Sutton and his staff for hosting this morning uh, to promote the collaboration between Korea and the southeastern United States, including South Carolina, and to encourage Korean companies to explore our region as a place uh, to do business. Uh, with companies planning decades ahead to cultivate sustainability and development, we look forward to continuing to interact with the Korean businesses and the, and the country of Korea as we go forward. The relationship between South Carolina and Korea goes back many years and is certainly very significant. Uh, Korea is our seventh largest trade partner uh, in South Carolina. Uh, we like to think of Korea as very similar to South Carolina. We're both a little bit small geographically, but we have an impact, a global impact that's certainly greater than our geographic size. Our promise to businesses that are considering uh, locating in South Carolina is that we will be your partner uh, from launch to 
a legacy that we will, from the moment you decide to come to South Carolina until you have been in South Carolina for decades, we will be your partner uh, for our mutual uh, success. And that is a promise that we make to each and every business uh, that locates in South Carolina. Part of that promise is that South Carolina embraces the future, that South Carolina is the home to American innovation, that we're built for the new economy, and that when you invest in South Carolina, you grow. Your business grows, our communities grow, and uh, you grow personally. Uh, and that is certainly uh, the commitment that we, we make and embody. Uh, we value the many Korean companies that have located in South Carolina, including Samsung, which will be on a panel uh, a little bit later this morning. Uh, and uh, we look forward to continuing that relationship with those companies and with the companies that are considering South Carolina today. We have for many years maintained an office in Seoul. Uh, today, Sunny Kim is uh, with us. She's the head of our office in Seoul. I uh, hope you take the uh, opportunity to meet uh, Sunny and have uh, discussions with her uh, about uh, South Carolina. Uh, we look forward to uh, the time we have to spend with you uh, today and to getting to know you. And we look forward to uh, continuing the uh, relationship as we go forward from here. Thank you very much. And finally, we'll hear from Georgia, uh, in person at least this morning, we do have some videos coming up. Deputy Commissioner Christy Brigman will deliver her congratulatory remarks. Good morning. You may have been looking forward to hearing from Commissioner Wilson via video, but you have me live and in person instead. So thank you so much for having me. for having me here today, and welcome everyone to Georgia. Georgia has recently had record-breaking years and unprecedented success in economic development projects. Our business-friendly environment, logistics, infrastructure, diverse and skilled workforce are just a few of the reasons we have seen this success. We're grateful to our partners around the world who share our dedication to creating hope and opportunities by delivering high-quality jobs to Georgians. We've also seen an unprecedented pace of projects and activity from Korea. Korea has been our top source of foreign direct investment and job creation for the past three years. Just a few months ago, Governor, uh, our Governor Brian Kim and Georgia Department of Economic Development Commissioner uh, Pat Wilson were both in Korea to celebrate the success in our strong partnerships. In fact, it is because of that success and our partnerships that Korea was the first country that Governor Kim visited upon taking office. I also love to point out that when he did take office, when Governor Kemp did take office, Georgia had the fourth largest Korean population in the country. And today, we're happy to celebrate that Georgia has the third largest Korean population in the United States. The Georgia Department of Economic Development and the state generally have maintained strong relationships with Korea for many years. Our connections with Korea go back decades. The state has maintained continuous representation in Korea since 1985. So I don't know how awake you are right now, uh, but let me share with you that that means next year we'll be celebrating the 40th anniversary of our Korea office. We're really excited about that. But generally looking around the state of Georgia, you can really see and feel the momentum and the growth happening. Uh, I think Commissioner McNair has us <laughs> aware of that growth as well, as she mentioned earlier. But I want to talk about Gwinnett County for a second. So we are located right now in Gwinnett County, Georgia, and it's actually the fifth most diverse county in the country, which is pretty remarkable. Every year, Explore Gwinnett organizes the Soul of the South Food Tour. That's S-E-O-U-L, Soul of the South Food Tour, for those of you who are not on your pun game this morning. Um, and also, there's a lot of pressure to spill in front of a large audience, but I think I got that right. Um, this tour fosters a relationship between Gwinnett County's hospitality industry and the local Korean community and is a fantastic way that we introduce participants to Korean food and culture. The success of that tour is a testament to the strength of our relationships 
And I think it's great to know that that tour actually sells out six months in advance. I hope some of you will attend that and look it up after this. But beyond Georgia, the Southeast as a whole has developed tight bonds with the Korea, Korean communities through economic, economic opportunities in manufacturing, uh, automotive, sustainable technologies, clean tech, and many more. Thank you to Seuss Korea for providing this opportunity for us to build new partnerships and to strengthen existing ones. And thank you all for being in Georgia. You'll all have to come on back for the Soul of Gwinnett food Soul tour. Of Soul of the Southeast food tour. Thank you very much, Deputy Commissioner Brickman. And we're now going to hear comments from Michelle Sanders, Secretary of Commerce for North Carolina, who unfortunately was not able to make it today. Instead, she sent a congratulatory video message. Hello, everyone. I'm North Carolina Commerce Secretary Michelle Baker Sanders, and I bring you greetings from Governor Boyd Cooper. In North Carolina, we believe in the power of collaboration, of working together with many companies and organizations and governments to advance the economic well-being of our people. You can see this spirit of collaboration at work when you consider North Carolina's international partnerships, including the strong ties of friendship we enjoy with our partners in Korea. Over the last decade, foreign direct investment has been a key driver for our state's strong economic growth. North Carolina is the ninth most populous state in the United States and has a yearly economic output of $767 billion, which is roughly equivalent to the nation of Switzerland. Overall, more than 1,700 foreign firms call North Carolina home, with more than 550 of them announcing new and expanding projects over the last 10 years, bringing more than 59,000 new jobs and more than $36 billion in capital investment. Korean businesses are an important part of this overall story. At least 21 Korean firms maintain operations in North Carolina, and since 2014, eight of those firms have announced new facilities or expansions, creating more than 700 new jobs and more than $149 million in capital investment. More than 6,000 Korean-born residents are in our state, and Korea is an important trading partner to North Carolina. According to the latest trade data, North Carolina purchased $1.3 billion in goods from Korea and more than $731 million of goods sent to Korean people. Some of Korea's biggest companies have located important operations in North Carolina, such as Dosan, Hyosung, Hanwha, Kiyoti, LS Cable, and TYM. We thank each of these companies for all that they do and all of their investments in North Carolina. Every day, hardworking people in our state get up in the morning and help these companies accomplish great things. Around the world, North Carolina is known for our strong workforce and for our strong education and training systems that provide our workers with the skills that companies value. Today, we're seeing a new electric vehicle cluster emerge in North Carolina with investments like Toyota and the Indian company Epsilon Advanced Materials. Biotechnology and life science companies have clustered in our state with investments from companies like Nova Nordisk, Lilly, and Fujifilm, and the computer and information technology companies like IBM, Google, and Apple all call North Carolina home. We're proud of the fact that North Carolina is one of the top places to do business in the United States, but we think you'll find the entire Southeast United States is dynamic and it's a growing region. Today's meeting is a place where you can all come together to learn about best practices that are emerging in our businesses and our communities, both here in the Southeast and Korea. Let's embrace the future together and continue to bring success to both Korea and the southeastern U.S. through this valuable partnership that you will experience at this conference. Thank you and have a great conference.
With this video, we're brought to the end of our opening session. Please give all of our speakers a round of applause.